Hey everyone, so in this video series I'm going to take you through how to develop actor oriented applications in LabVIEW using the actor framework. So the actor framework is an advanced concept in LabVIEW, however it's also my chosen framework for developing software. That's because it champions code reuse and I'm a really lazy developer so I want to reuse as much code as possible in a robust fashion. And there's loads of other benefits of using AF as well. There's also quite a few drawbacks, but we'll come on to those in this video series. In this particular video though, I'm going to build upon what you may already know about modular software development in LabVIEW using the queued message handler. We'll then outline the shortcomings of using the queued message handler in LabVIEW and introduce how the actor framework might be a better approach to software development. So let's get started with modular software development in LabVIEW. So for general best software practices, we split our code into modules that have high cohesion and low coupling. So to give an example of that, what that might mean, in a simple data logging application, we might have a data acquisition module, a file IO module, a user interface module, and a control module that organizes all the messages between the different loops. Our user interface module might actually be made up of two loops, one that is event-based and one that could be queue-based. When we say high cohesion, we mean that each module should have a definitive purpose and only be responsible for one thing. For example, the user interface module is only responsible for receiving data and displaying it, or responding to user inputs, but it's not responsible for file I.O nor does it have the ability to do file IO. And by low coupling, we mean that one module shouldn't be dependent on another. For example, the user interface should run even if the file IO loop hasn't loaded. So cohesion is all about how the module itself is written, whereas coupling is about how the module relies on other modules. The main benefits of a high cohesion are well, its readability, if you have closely related functions inside a single module, then it's clear what that module does. That module becomes maintainable because let's say there's a bug with writing to a file. You know that bug must occur in the file.io module and therefore you can test those specific functions. That module also becomes highly reusable because that module only has a definitive purpose, if you have other applications that need to use a file IO module, then you can simply drop that onto your block diagram in as many applications as you want. Whereas the benefits of low coupling are maintainability, so changes to a particular module are confined to that single module and don't then have a knock-on effect to other modules. Testability. So modules involved in unit testing can be kept to a minimum. So if all the functions are part of one single module, then you can just test those uh, functions using that same module. Now we know why we have these individual loops. Let's work out how we communicate between the loops. So let's click the start button on the front panel. That's going to send a message from the event handling loop to the user interface loop, which will then forward that message to the controller to say, yep, yeah, we need to start the process. The controller then knows, okay, this process, we need to start our data acquisition. That data from the data acquisition module can then be sent back either to the message handling loop, which will then forward it to data analysis, Data analysis could then pass it back to the message handling loop, which could then forward it to file.io, or the data acquisition loop could forward that data directly to data analysis and file.io. And data analysis could then pass the analyzed data to the file.io module. In LabVIEW, the entry into this high cohesion and low coupling approach is the QMH or the queued message handler. Now, if you haven't studied the queued message handler before, 
is a design pattern that allows you to separate your code into individual modules and communicate between them. For now, we'll give you a basic overview of how this is an implementation of what I showed you earlier. So if we head over to the event handling loop, as we click start, we're going to send a message to the user interface module. That is simply going to send another start message to the controller. The controller then knows, okay, I've started, I'm going to send an acquire data message to the data acquisition module. The data acquisition module will then start acquiring all of this data and then forward that data back to the message handling loop. The message handling loop could then forward it onto a file IO loop or to the user interface or to an analysis loop. There are a couple of things that I want to point out about the queued message handler that I've put on the screen here. The first is that these individual modules are typically separate project libraries. Each of those project libraries will have a module main VI and the contents of those module main VIs we see here. Inside of those project libraries, we will have our communication system, i.e. queues or user events, and the references of those queues or user events will be stored in functional global variables or FGVs. Those FGVs can then be shared with the other modules. However, note that the controller module or the message handling loop will have access to all of the other module references and the other module reference and the other modules will have access to the message handling loop reference. However, the other modules do not have access to anyone else's reference. The last thing I want to point out here is that not all modules need to be loaded. In fact, they can be launched dynamically at runtime, asynchronously. So we went through all of that pretty quickly because it was only intended to be an overview of modular software development that hopefully you already knew most of already. You might be thinking, well, what's wrong with all of this? Well, if you notice, these, this user interface module, the message handling loop, the data acquisition module, they're all exact, it's exactly the same code. However, I've had to duplicate it three times. So whether your QMH looks like this on the left hand side or this on the right hand side where it's been put into individual project libraries, the chances are you're not going to ever reuse this code. Hopefully in your company, if you're using the QMH like this, you've developed some templates to speed up the software development process. However, there's a much more structured technique that we can use in order to maximize code reuse and efficiency when developing code. And that's really where the actor framework comes in. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how the actor framework has been derived in order to show how it fixes the problem of code reuse, particularly in modular applications like this. So, as always, if you have any feedback about this video, please leave it in the comments below. Give a like if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Uh, please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.